God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in nomine Patri, Tire, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So today is considered the birthday of the church. When children leave today, they will receive these balloons as a symbol of the birthday of the church, which we celebrate, of course. And you saw a new tradition that we have here with the, the uh, uh, kite of the, of the dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Uh, normally, when you see a kite like that in large cathedrals, the streamers are very long, so that as they come by and touch your shoulder, you may feel a sense of the Holy Spirit. But there's been too many stories, including right here, yours truly, who have been hit in the eye with the end of a kite little thing. So <laughs> because of safety reasons, we decided to cut those streamers down just a bit. We don't need anyone going to the ER. But if you look on your bulletin, you see a symbol of the Holy Spirit, this beautiful piece of art. Pentecost by Mark Wiggins. You see the people who are in the what we call the Oran's position, which is what I do when I celebrate the Mass, to, to, to lift up high to God to receive. You heard our readings today, the first reading, in that wonderful, very soft and romantic language in German. Uh, <laughs> Ryan did a wonderful job, and, and then Francais, and then you heard Latin. Now I can assure you, even though it says people were filled with new wine, they were not filled with new wine. I made sure of that today. Uh, so, we, we have the coming of the Holy Spirit on this day. Now, in the early church, this was considered the second highest holy day of the church. Easter being the highest holy day, and Pentecost being the second. The third was Epiphany. Christmas wasn't even in the mix at that time. And uh, over the years now, as you know, we have, it seemed to kind of morph into uh, Christmas, uh, excuse me, uh, Easter number one for church-going folks, Christmas number two, and then Pentecost, or for secular Christians, or Christers, or perhaps whatever, it might be, you know, Christmas and Easter come twice a year, Christer we call them. Um, Christmas number one, and then Easter number two. But Pentecost is a major feast day. It's a very, very important feast day. We, we have the red the color of the spirit, the tongues of fire, that's where we get that red from. And so then throughout the entire summer we have this um, third Sunday after Pentecost, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, because we're in a season of an extended Pentecost, the green season, green for growth, how God is growing in us continually. And so it all starts today, it starts here. It starts here on this day. Well, Pentecost did not just come about on its own, it actually came about from a Jewish festival called Shavuot. Shavuot is S-H-A-V-U-O-T, which is a grain festival. It's kind of considered a minor holiday in the Jewish calendar. But on this day, 49 days after the exodus of the, of the Hebrews leaving Egypt, on the 49th day, it is told that this is the moment at Mount Sinai when Moses received the Torah, the giving of the Torah to Moses on this day. And so like many religions, you will find a kind of a, a Christian religion, in this case, where it took, kind of took over a Jewish festival, which is not uncommon in the early church, as people were trying to find what this way was called. It wasn't called Christianity until the second or third century. So this way, and the idea of many Jews were allowed to follow the rabbi, Jesus, who was Jewish, and what this meant. So the idea of, you know, kind of borrowing, if you will, or stealing, or however you want to call it, a Jewish festival in order to make it a Christian festival, uh, which is where we get Pentecost. Penta meaning, of course, 550 Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. So it's not, it's not a coincidence that 49 days after the Exodus story, you know, we have this. So we, we have to give credit, credits due, we have to give our fo footnote to the appropriate people. So the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes on a bishop's mitre, which is a hat, you will see kind of the spirit of dove or the tongues of fire, you know, going up, kind of like in our in our pictorial thing here, the idea of the spirit. If you've ever noticed in the back two 
pieces of the bishop, they have two little flaps. One is for the New Testament, one is for the Old Testament. Uh, there are some other views of what those mean. Um, <laughs> nothing, you know, nothing crazy or anything like that. Um, not that I know of. Uh, anyway, so today we celebrate the coming of the language culture of all different races, welcome into the kingdom of heaven, uh, which is a wonderful thing for this microcosm of the kingdom of heaven right here at St. Martin's. The idea that all are welcome, a, a radical hospitality, a radical inclusiveness, uh, which is awesome. Um, so we, we have the coming of the Holy Spirit. We have the sense of uh, the birthday of the church. Jesus told his disciples, you are not alone. I will be with you to the end. And the Father will send something, someone, to be with you, which is the Spirit. Which is the Spirit. So if I had to have a title for this sermon, which I usually try to revive to Susan for the, the website, I guess I would call this sermon uh, Making Room for the Holy Spirit. And so I'd like to ask you in your own life now in 2015, how are you making room for the Holy Spirit? Today, this year, how have you made room? How are you continuing to make room? It's not a one-time deal, right? God is always working in us. How are you making room for the Holy Spirit in your life? You know, when we have very tough times, as, as many of us as we've ever lived, of course, as adults, we have some time where we've been through the valley of the shadow of death, through pain and, and sorrow and whatever that might mean in your own life. And the passage today from the Epistle of Romans, which you heard in French, reminds us that we're not alone. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not have to know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. God is always there, even when we think that he's not. Even if we said, I've been praying for this for 20 years, I've been trying to have closure, for peace. Sometimes God's answer is in the silence, to wait, or I'm giving you the peace. Pay attention. I know that happens to, happens to me. It has to happen to me. Sometimes fall on my face when, when I'm whatever I got for it. Puts out his foot and I trip. And I, oh yeah, that's what you're trying to tell me, right? But it doesn't end there. I wish this passage went a little further. One more verse. Romans 8, 28. For all things work for good for those who love God and who are called according to God's purpose. See, it just doesn't end there. It's all things work for good for those who love God. And that's true. It may not be right now in our visible sign. It could be later down the road. I've got a friend of mine who's a priest in Miami, and she had a bracelet, and she had that passage inscribed in, the, in her bracelet. Romans 8, 28, her favorite passage. For all things work for good for those who love God. It doesn't talk about faith, or creed, or belief. It talks about love. And that's the foundation of everything we do. Jesus asked Peter, you know, do you love me? That's the three times. He didn't say, are you faithful? Can you recite the Nicene Creed by heart? <laughs> you, know, do you know the 39 articles of whatever, you know, Richard Hooker in the back of our prayer book? No. Do you love me? And then feed my sheep. Be in the world. The Shema, Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. We say that in the summary of the law in the right one. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we are not alone in the midst of when difficult times come. I know you've seen that footsteps in the sand kind of poem, which is kind of, you know, you've seen a lot, but it's really true. God does not abandon us. You see two footprints along and then you turn back and then you see 
why? And he's like, well, wait, you've abandoned me, God. No. And Jesus said, that's when I picked you up and carried you. The signs too deep for words. God never does not hear our prayers. God always hears them. God's listening. He's present. So what this day is about is asking us to be attentive to, to tune in our antenna, if you will, to what the Spirit is doing in your life. What the Spirit is saying to you, to how you hear the Spirit, how you feel the Spirit, how you taste the Spirit, as we do in our sacrament, how you touch the Spirit, all the sensations we have, the tactile. You know, that's why I left the Presbyterian Church, because they just bring communion right by, like you're at a restaurant, you know? And I had to go up and do ritual, kneel, touch, feel, hold the altar, look up, all of that, which is important, I think, for us as people, to have ritual. But then it goes a little deeper, okay? So we know the advocate is another name for the spirit, comforter, paraclete. I had a friend one time, Method, uh, Lutheran pastor, so he held up, held up a pair of cleats in his sermon one time, you know, and talked about the paraclete. You know, people are always doing gags and this and that. I'm, I'm not quite there yet, but, um, but that's a great idea because you remember that paraclete, paracletes, right? So that what what this day's about is not only to feel, but to think about going deeper into the intuition part of who God has called us to be. To intuit the spirit, to be attentive. Thomas Merton, a great Christian uh, monk, once wrote, we don't have to imitate Christ, but only animate him, because he is already in us. Through the spirit, we don't have to imitate him, only animate him. He's in each one of us through the spirit. Jesus told his disciples, you will not be alone. God, the Father, sending the spirit. God continues to send the Spirit to us. He continues to make the Spirit manifest to us. It makes itself manifest to us not only in our individual lives, but in the corporate life of the church. You know, in the 1910s and 20s, <clears throat> the Episcopal Church was one of the first to speak out against the child labor movement. There were many Episcopal priests who walked in Selma, Alabama in the 60s and worked down in Mississippi in the 50s. Alabama and Georgia. Women's ordination in the 1970s. And now recognizing gay and lesbian people, all of God's children. No one is excluded. The Spirit continues to make itself manifest. And I, I, I'd rather be in a church like that because God's doing God's work. And I'm okay with that. I don't have to be in some of these other churches where you know, I'm not sure I accept God's doing God's work. You know, I've got enough problems on my own trying to get my own schedule. I don't need to try to manage God, right? <laughs> Some of these other churches who, who don't have that view. I wonder what the spirit is for them. In Rite 3, which we don't use a lot, which is called Enriching Our Worship, after the reading of the scripture, we say, hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Instead of saying the word of the Lord, we say, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Spirit always, through our experience, through our reason, through our living, through our being aware, being in love with each other, and loving each other, through agape, and being caring for the stranger, and the orphan, and the widow, and those in need, that's the Spirit. So I'd like to ask you, maybe this year, to kind of expand what that means for you, like the balloon, you know, when you when you don't have anything in there, it's just a little piece of rubber, but when you blow it up with the Spirit, it is expansive. What is that expansion for you? How is that in your life? How will that make itself manifest? How will God do that? How is God doing that? And today, so we then focus on kind of slowing down, listening, feeling, being open, Ron's position fighting, because that's what God wants us to do, so that we can take it all in, inculcate it, digest it, breathe it, and then share it. I think it's
for ourselves, but share it how God moves for each of us. So that's our homework. If you don't mind me giving you a little homework, teacher before priest. That's our homework for this year. Where is God doing God's work in you through the Spirit? And to that we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In nomine Patris, Filia, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen.